Hi guys and welcome back to another video. My name is April. If this is your first time here, welcome. On this channel, we talk about skincare, makeup, beauty, and we also review celebrity skincare. If you're interested in all of that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the like button if you like the video. And yeah, let's get started. So in today's video, we'll be talking about preservatives. Preservatives are something that have been quite uh, controversial of late in the skincare industry. And today we're here to break it all down. First question is, what are preservatives? Preservatives are chemical compounds that help stop the growth of microbes such as bacteria, yeast, and mold in a formulation. Preservatives stop growth by acting on spores when they germinate and killing cells, usually by disrupting the cell membranes or by making the product was sold to growth. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering why are preservatives even used in skincare. There are several reasons why preservatives are used in skincare and I'm going to list a few of them. Preservatives are used in skincare products because a lot of the times the pH of products are at a pH of 5.5 which is the pH that our skin is at. The pH of 5.5 is very favorable for a lot of microbes to grow in so at that pH a lot of microbes will grow so it's imperative to have the preservative system to stop these microbes from growing. Aqueous and organic formulations are a great environment for microbes to grow. Also, a lot of the times, uh, skincare products are left in the open, so there's a lot of microbes in the air that will enable the growth of microbes. And finally, a lot of the times, uh, skincare products are left in the bathroom, they're left in you know just humid conditions that also favor the growth of microbes. Now there's so many different types of preservatives. There is natural preservatives, the synthetic preservatives, which are a lot more common. I'm gonna list all of them down on the screen. Benzoates such as sodium benzoate, benzoic acid, nitrides such as sodium nitrides, sulfites such as sulfur dioxide, sorbates such as sodium sorbates, potassium sorbates, uh, disodium and tetrasodium EDTA, parabens, phenoxyethanol, Ascorbyl palmitate, benzoic acid, benzo, benzo alcohol, sodium benzoate. Today we're going to focus on the more common preservatives and we're going to talk about them because a lot of the times these are the preservatives that a lot of people have problems with. Starting with parabens. Parabens have had a lot of controversy over the years. More recently, there's been tons of articles uh, that have said that they mimic the hormone estrogen and a lot of people are starting to be more aware and they've tried to stay away from any product containing parabens. But when you look at the articles that have mentioned parabens as cancer causing or estrogen like, a lot of those articles have no conclusivity. They don't really have a bearing. They did show that parabens were present in the breast cancer tissues but it also didn't show that they were also present in normal breast tissue. So it's not, there's not a lot of data supporting that parabens cause breast cancer is just a finding that has no uh, bearing or conclusivity. So parabens are not the enemy here. They've been around for such a long time, for years and years. I mean, since the 1900s. They are broad spectrum, which means it protects skincare products from growing bacteria, yeast, and mold. They are probably the least sensitive preservatives that we have out in the market. I mean, a lot of dermatologists will prescribe a product that have parabens because it's safe for people that have eczema, rosacea, or any skin problems because it has very low sensitivity. Also, parabens are used within regulatory limits. Most skincare preservatives are used at 1% or less. So the chances of parabens causing damage is very, very, very less likely. A lot of parabens are very inert and really don't do anything to your system. Plus, as humans, we have very complex systems that can pretty much get rid of a lot of things uh, and not cause us harm. With that being said, my personal take on this is I try not to have a lot of products that contain paraben because overexposure to a certain chemical can be damaging in the long run. So I personally just don't use a lot of products that contain paraben, not that it would do any harm to me, but I just prefer to use a limited amount of products that do have parabens. Now moving away from parabens to formaldehyde releasers. Now formaldehyde releasers became popular after parabens started to be an issue in the market. They've been known to be really sensitive, so if you have eczema or any skin issues, 
formaldehyde releases would not be a great option for you. They do cover broad spectrum, so they do prevent the growth of bacteria, yeast, and mold. Uh, but the biggest issue with formaldehyde releases is they do cause sensitivity on the skin. And the next product that's really common is phenoxyethanol. Phenoxyethanol is also broad spectrum. It covers against gram positive, gram negative bacteria as well as yeast and mold. It's very common now, especially at my job, when we have uh, clients request a change control on their formula. A lot of times they're substituting a paraben with phenoxyethanol. Phenoxyethanol is great. However, there's been recent studies that it can be really sensitizing, where I believe they injected transdermally about 10% of phenoxyethanol into the skin and there was a lot of sensitivity. Again, preservatives are used at 1% or less, so it's not realistic. So a lot of the studies are not, uh, uh, have no bearing to them. They're not based on uh, concrete facts. So I would take them with a grain of salt. Moving on to natural preservatives. Natural preservatives include rosemary, oregano, no extract, hops, salt, vinegar, alcohol, and castor oil. Also some oils like tea tree, thyme, lemongrass, and lavender can also act as preservatives. Now that you guys know more about some of the common preservatives that we currently have in the market, I'm going to talk about some of the common misconceptions that we also have about preservatives and what they do. A lot of people believe that antioxidants are also preservatives and that is not true, that is false. Antioxidants like vitamin A and rosemary extracts are not preservatives. Antioxidants prevent the rancidity of vegetable oils in a formulation. So when you have an oil, an organic oil, they prevent it from oxidizing. So preservatives stop the growth of microbes or microorganisms. Antioxidants stop oxidation in the system. Some extracts, as I mentioned earlier, can act as preservatives however they only stop a narrow band of microbes the most you probably get with extracts is six months uh, of stability and the product will start to grow microbes compared to phenoxyethanol or, uh, or parabens that give you a shelf life of two to three years a lot of people believe that when you have a product with low ph so basically an acidic product it will stop the growth of microbes and that is not true so in the case of something like a conditioner that has a ph of for. There are certain microbes that can still grow. Like I said, there is thousands of microbes. So the smallest chance that these microbes get to grow, they will grow. So unless a product is below three on the pH scale or above 10, which is more alkaline, a microbe will most likely grow in that system. A lot of people also think that natural preservatives are more safe than synthetic preservatives. Again, that is not true. If anything, natural preservatives are a lot weaker than synthetic preservatives because a lot of the times it takes a huge number of plants to produce use just a small quantity of a natural preservative so it's not economically viable to do that. So a lot of time formulators will use a little amount of a natural preservative and that system wouldn't hold for a long time. So natural preservatives are not safer. Synthetic preservatives go through rigorous amounts of tests to make sure that they're safe not only for adults but also babies and also their long shelf life just gives it a more favorable appeal to formulators. Finally, a lot of products claim to be preservative free. That is not true. A lot of the times uh, extracts or whatever preservative or natural preservative that's used in that system will act as an emulsifier or a humectant. So it has more than one use so that uh, company or client will say it's preservative free, but it's really not because the preservative using the system is acting as something else so they can back up that claim but it's not entirely preservative free for the most part you do need a preservative no matter what even with oils although it's not as imperative to use a preservative in an oil especially for something like a sunscreen stick that's only just using alcohol and waxes so you don't really need a preservative in that system but if it has water or vegetable oils you definitely need a preservative in that system because those are favorable conditions for microbes to grow Finally, before we end this video, I'll show you guys a picture of a formula that we made. This is a sunscreen lotion. You can see that LSPC, which is Linguaserve, a synthetic preservative, is used at a 1% uh, amount for this formula. 
So again, preservatives are used at regulatory limits that are conducted by the FDA and a lot of chemists and formulas are aware of this and will not consciously just make a product that doesn't meet the standards. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and learned a lot more about preservatives and what they're used for and don't get too scared about parabens and other preservatives that you might be wary about. Just do your research and find out for the most part if it's good for your skin type. Thank you guys for watching my video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.